Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, F-16 production to move to South Carolina, somewhat nominated as NTSB Vice Chair, DJI proposes electronic ID framework for small drones. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson, it's March 29th and this is Airborne Unlimited. The electric jet is moving to South Carolina. The production line for Lockheed Martin's F-16 fighter jets will be moved from Fort Worth, Texas to Greenville, South Carolina, according to company officials. The company says it will roll the last Texas-built F-16 off the line in September, at which time all the equipment and tools for manufacturing the aircraft will be transferred to Greenville. The Fort Worth plant will be expanded to produce F-35 Lightning II airplanes. Lockheed Martin has had a presence in Greenville for more than 30 years. According to a company spokesperson, Leslie Farmer, Farmer said that the Greenville plant has the necessary facilities and infrastructure to support F-16 production with only a few updates. The state's experienced workforce and right-to-work laws also played a part in the decision, Farmer said. Adding the F-16 to the Greenville campus will bring an additional 200 jobs to the state. There are currently some 500 people working for the company in Greenville. President Donald Trump has nominated Robert L. Sumwatt III to be a member of the NTSB for a five-year term expiring December 16, 2021. He has also been nominated to serve as a vice chair of the board for a two-year term. Sumwatt, who is from South Carolina, has been a member of the NTSB since 2006. He served as NTSB Vice Chairman from 2006 to 2008. Since joining the board, Mr. Sumwalt has been a fierce advocate for improving safety in all modes of transportation, with a focus on teen driver safety, impaired driving, distractions in transportation, and rail and aviation safety initiatives. Before joining the NTSB, Mr. Sumwalt was a pilot for 32 years, including 24 years with the U.S. Airways. He has a distinguished transportation safety background and his groundbreaking contributions to safety have been recognized by a number of prestigious industry awards. He is an inductee into the South Carolina Aviation Hall of Fame. Mr. Sumwalt earned an undergraduate degree from the University of South Carolina and a Master of Aeronautical Science from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University with concentrations in aviation aerospace safety systems and human factors aviation systems. After the break, DJI proposes a drone ID concept. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airboard Unlimited, Aero TV, the new AMA drone report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. DJI has proposed an electronic identification framework for UAS that would allow authorities and the United States to identify drone owners when necessary while also respecting their privacy. Brendan Schulman, DJI Vice President of Policy and Legal Affairs, said, quote, DJI understands that the accountability is a key part of responsible drone use, and we have outlined a proposal that balances the privacy of drone operators with the legitimate concerns authorities have about some drone operations. Last year, the United States Congress directed the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration to develop approaches to remotely identifying the operators and owners of unmanned aircraft and set deadlines for doing so over the next two years. DJI has outlined a concept in which each drone would transmit its location as well as a registration number or similar identification code using inexpensive radio equipment that is already on board many drones today. 
that could be adopted by all manufacturers. Anyone with a proper receiver could obtain those transmissions from the drone, but only law enforcement officials or aviation regulators would be able to use that registration number to identify the registered owner. The best solution is usually the simplest, DJI wrote in a white paper on the topic. The focus of the primary method for remote identification should be a way for anyone concerned about a drone flight in close proximity to report an identifier number to the authorities, who would then have the tools to investigate the complaint without infringing on operator privacy. Last week, DJI submitted the white paper to the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International, which is collecting perspectives on how to remotely identify small drones in the United States in advance of an FAA effort to develop a consensus approach. With some 3,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. Wow, a full house. Good morning and welcome to AEA's 60th anniversary celebration. Here it is, the full archive of ANN's amazing live production of the 2017 AEA opening address and new product introductions. See all the cool stuff from AEA 2017. Search AEA 2017 opening address and new product introductions on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, Elite certifies motion-based trainer. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call around the patch. Two new single-seat piston helicopter trainer models, TH-22S and TH-22SM from Elite Simulation Solutions, have recently been FAA approved as advanced aviation training devices. Elite's new trainer is reportedly the first motion-based helicopter, AATD, specifically designed to include hover and hovering maneuvers training, full touchdown auto-rotation training, training for slope landings, and running landings. The George H.W. Bush Carrier Strike Group is currently launching missions against the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria in support of Operations Inherent Resolve. From the Arabian Gulf, Rear Admiral Kenneth R. Whitesell, Commander, CSG-2, said the missions are part of the key to accelerating the fight against ISIS. Flight Safety International announces the start of the only factory-authorized Gulfstream G650 training program located close to operators in Europe, the Middle East, and surrounding regions. The training is provided using the 5th Gulfstream G650 simulator built by Flight Safety. Currently installed at the company's learning center at the Farnborough Airport in the UK, it is now qualified to Level D by the FAA and EASA. 22,000 miles above the equator, the third space-based infrared system satellite sent its first images home. Launched on January 20th aboard an Atlas V rocket, the USAF uses the satellites to provide faster and more accurate missile warning data to the nation and its allies. Upon reaching orbit, the SPURS completed deployments of its sun-tracking solar arrays, antenna wing assemblies, and light shade. Hawaiian Airlines and ALPA have announced that the union's membership ratified a 63-month contract amendment that provides significant compensation increases for the airline's 670 pilots. Pilots approved the contract amendment outlined in a tentative agreement reached last month. The amendment takes effect April 1st and its terms extends through July 1st, 2022. 
Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The order book for Marenko Swiss helicopter Sky SH-09 has reached 101 aircraft, according to the company. The milestone was reached following the company's participation in Heli Expo 2017. A contract for the 101st helicopter was signed at the event, the seventh for the company. The MSH team has seen continued interest and strong motivation of the industry to get the latest testing and development news, and all are looking forward to beginning operations of the Sky SH-09 helicopter in their respective environments. The additional orders taken in Dallas were signed with various owners and operators from four continents, with the latest signatures for sales to undisclosed clients from southern and western USA. Chief Commercial Officer Mattia Seen said this team achievement confirmed what people say about Texas, everything is bigger. That held true for Swiss-made helicopter. In preparation of the show, MSH ordered a special paint scheme for their display aircraft. The result was a dual livery bearing the colors of Air Zermatt and Alpen Lift helicopter, two of the launch customers of the Swiss Sky SH-09 helicopter. Interest was extremely high for the 2.5-ton class multi-role aircraft. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.